are back now in the kitchen with Karen Ensley. She's the host of Cooking from the Heart. That's on Cox Channel 11. And she's here today to make a couple of her fall favorites with butternut squash. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You know, butternut squash, you definitely think of it as like a fall thing. Mm -hmm. And I think of it as like one of the first foods I gave my kids. I, I'm the same and then it kind of stopped there. Yeah, well, I so I am excited squash. to see what you do with squash. Well, a lot of people don't really know. I mean, they see this big kind of funky mm -hmm. shape, and it's hard, and so it's intimidating. And actually, none of my friends that I talked to about this today have ever cooked with it. Okay. Because they just think it's too, I guess, intimidating or weird, whatever. But why do you like it? <laughs> it's very, very good for you. Um, my daughter loves it. It has a kind of a nice, sweet taste to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great. It's got a lot of vitamin A. It's got tons of vitamin C. It's got vitamin E. Um, and it's very low in fat. So All right. It's, it's good for you. Okay, so we're going to do the butternut squash soup first. Yes. And so I've taken one and I went ahead and cut it in half because it is kind of tough. And you really have to use some, some arm muscle. <laughs> but um, what I like to do is I want to roast it first. And you could steam it, you could boil it, um, however you want to do it. But I cut it in quarters because it'll cook a little faster. You know, the smaller you cut things, the faster they're going to cook. And when you've got kids and family, mm -hmm. time is, you know, you need to be efficient with your time. Right, but you were saying that butternut squash can be intimidating. It can't. It, really well, doesn't, it doesn't. It's because of the cutting. Because it's, it's like, how do you cut it? Where do you start, right? Yes. And it yes. has seeds. So then you're like, okay, what do I do with yes. these? And then so you just take a spoon <laughs> mm -hmm. and you scoop out the seeds. And you can do it when it's cut in half or when it's cut in quarters, whatever makes you happy. And I suppose you could roast these, but there really aren't that many. So it might, you know, not really mm -hmm. be worth the effort. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some olive oil on this, and I'm going to pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. All right. And um, you're just going to do that until it's nice and tender with a fork, and you can stick that in there. Oh, great, great. So, so a lot of your cooking um, isn't complicated. No. I try to do things that the average Joe can do at home. You all know, right. Anybody who's got kids or who's working, you don't mm -hmm. have a lot of time. You know, you don't really know how to use all these gourmet so ingredients. So not too fancy, but it's definitely going to taste good and look good. Right. I call it real food for real families. Nice. So. Let me um, get these on the cookie, cookie okay. sheet here. So we're going to bake those, and that kind of, I guess, softens it up. It'll soften it up, yes. And then with my daughter, what I used to do just from there, I would just puree it, and that was it. And she would just eat it. And right, that's easy enough. She's three now, and mm -hmm. she still calls it yummy, yummy, because that's, that's, <laughs> that's what we Maybe used to do. Maybe I need to go back to the butternut squash, because after we got past puree, it kind of slowly phased out of the children's menu. Well, she doesn't. it's a texture thing for my daughter. She mm -hmm. doesn't like... Um, funky textures, but okay. if it's pureed, she'll eat it that That's way. That's a lot of kids. Yeah, They're very exactly. picky in it. So I'm just putting a little salt. I'm kind of going to give a nice little rub down. Okay, so we put the olive oil, a little bit of salt with the mm -hmm. rub down just to yep. get some of that flavoring yep. going. Wipe my hands off. And then this will go in the oven for 40 minutes at 400 degrees. I'm just going right. to pop it in here real quick. Try not to let it slide around too much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this okay. soup is really simple. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, so I've got some olive oil. I'm going to put in about three or four tablespoons. Just enough to really kind of coat the bottom of the pan. Okay. And it would help if I turned the stove on. I got the right one? Yep. And then I'm going to take an onion, um, a medium-sized onion or half of a large onion. This one was kind of big, but I, I kept this half just so you could see the size of it. Mm -hmm. I only need about half of that. All right. And I made a real small dice. Um, one thing when you're cutting onions, if you leave this part on, it makes it easier to, to keep it together. Right. Oh, gotcha. So that's going to get hot. I'm just going to saute these in there for a few minutes until they get nice and soft. Mm -hmm. Throw in the butternut squash, and um, we're just about done from there. Oh, all right. So then that's all you need? Pretty well, a couple more things. Some chicken stock and some cream and some thyme, but that's mm -hmm. it. So it's a very, it's like four or five ingredients. Okay, and much. so this is what the uh, squash is going to look like yes, yes. once you, um, how long did we leave it in there? 40, for 40 minutes, minutes, you said? Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you could pass me that one over there, I can just show you. It gets, it shrinks down a little bit in size, and it gets real soft. Mm-hmm. So it makes it really easy. It's kind of messy. It's definitely a nice fall, I guess, comfort thing, especially on a cold day. You yeah. Want some warm soup. It's like everybody automatically thinks chicken soup. Yes. Or, um, you or know, chili. Some of the, or chili. <laughs> yeah. But butternut squash. But it's so good. But you can see it's, just, it's very soft. It's, it's pretty messy. You're scooping it almost like I ice just, cream. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, they probably could do butternut squash ice cream. Oh, that maybe. I've maybe heard of avocado ice cream, like on chopped. I have heard of that too. Well, I haven't tried that it though. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm adventurous. What would but you serve this with? This I would serve with some nice crusty bread. Okay. And it's a very thick kind of hearty meal, um, so you really don't need. Oh, really? So you wouldn't necessarily need it as like a starter to something no. else. No, I mean you can kinda... if you do a very small portion. But when it cooks, it gets really thick. Oh, okay. So um, it just becomes a very, very thick hearty soup. But yeah, you can see it's really it comes off really easy, but but it is kind of kind of messy. So how long is the butternut squash in season? That, I, I mean, don't you can know. find it now. I'm sure you can find it year-round. It's, round it's and bring a winter it wherever, squash. But. It's mm -hmm. a fall and winter squash. So I would imagine through the end of winter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all the squashes, butternut, acorn squash. I mean, they're all just great. 
But it's funny, my friends that, that have never cooked in it, they're mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just an ornamental thing. <laughs> I'm like, well, it can be. It's just, yeah, it's just for it. decoration. It's just for decoration. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my onions in here. Okay, so we'll get the onions going, saute yeah. those. Get those. And if you could pass me that wooden Which thingy. One? This one. All right. Yeah, because they're both wooden, aren't they? Mm -hmm. This is a bamboo, actually. It's my latest kick. I like cooking <laughs> with bamboo things for so, some reason. So, and you do cooking from the heart. So when does that air? That airs, well, it's pretty much every day. It airs on Fridays, the, the new episodes, mm -hmm. and then the, it has reruns. You know, and so the this week. is the type of stuff that you're doing? Yes, absolutely. And so what would the total prep time be on this particular dish? For the um, bar well, bar? okay, if you don't count the baking time, because the baking time is what takes long. It's 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else, I would say maybe seven minutes. Seven so once you minutes. get it going, once you saute those onions and get everything yeah. stewed. Yeah, this is what takes the longest. It's going to be a quick... Mm -hmm. Quick process. All right, so um, we are going to check in on your butternut squash soup coming up, and then we're going to have another butternut treat, which is butternut squash bread. All right, so we'll be doing that in our second segment with Karen. We're back in the kitchen now with Karen Enson. She's the host of Cooking from the Heart on Cox Channel 11, and she's here in our kitchen today to make a couple of her fall favorites with butternut squash. So the first time around, we were doing the butternut squash mm -hmm. soup, which is a finished product over here, and this actually looks yummy. It's Thick and you added the cream. Mm -hmm. Add um, cream and thyme. And cream and thyme. That yeah, and, after you, and, and the roasted uh, butternut squash. Yes. So this time around, we are doing bread. Yes, we're doing a chocolate chip butternut squash chocolate bread. Chocolate chip. You didn't tell me about the chocolate chip uh, part. Yeah. That makes well, it a little more exciting. <laughs> it's a little tastier, too. Um, and this is very simple, too. It has a few more ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, you have your dry mix, your wet mix. And so the dry mix is going to be um, one and three fourths cup of bread flour. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw in a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. Mm -hmm. A teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, which is pretty much just cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and allspice, I think. You can buy it as pumpkin pie spice? Yeah, you can oh, buy it. Okay. Things. Yeah, but it's just... You don't have to mix your own. All right. Right. Just and you clarify. Could, but. <laughs> and then two teaspoons of... Actually, a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. Okay. So that's it. And I like to use the bread flour for this because even though it has more gluten, which is very not, you know, kosher at the moment, I guess. Right. Um, it makes the breads kind of raise a little higher. Okay. So, so then you just want to whisk it together so it's all kind of nice and homogenous. And then you have your um, your wet mixture. Right. And so why do you like to do the butternut squash bread? I mean, we know about zucchini bread and banana bread. Those are kind of like Well, I always like to, to try to, to, to find different ways to do things. We did a show um, at a strawberry farm, and I did all savory stuff with strawberries. Oh, nice. So um, I just like to mix it up a little bit, literally. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we thought we'd give it a try. Plus, it's just so good for you. I know some kids have a hard time eating vegetables, so it's a good way to kind of sneak the vegetables in right. there. Now, do you really taste the butternut squash in the bread? Um, you do a little bit. It tastes a lot like a zucchini bread or like a pumpkin bread. Okay. So it's very tasty. Oh, that sounds good you to me. You taste the chocolate chips, too. Right. Would you, do, would you eat the, um, the butternut squash bread with your butternut squash soup? No, it would be dessert. Definitely. <laughs> that would be a little too much. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so sweet, and that's very thyme, and I think oh, it'll be gotcha. a flavor clash. Gotcha. Okay, so I've got um, my eggs. I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of oil. Mm -hmm. And if you wouldn't mind putting half a cup of water from that. All right. I'm sorry, actually, a quarter cup, cup quarter of water. Cup. Yeah, okay. half a cup of oil, quarter cup of water. And I'm going to do a cup and a half of brown sugar. You could use white sugar a lot, but I think brown sugar just has a nicer flavor to it. It's okay. kind of richer, so I just use the light brown sugar. Mm -hmm. I've got my water in there. I'm going to get that nice and mixed up. Did I say mice? Mice mixed up. Mice mixed up. <laughs> Spending too much time That's with my three-year-old. That's coming together very nicely. Yeah. So you have your dry mixture here. Yep. Working on the wet mixture. And I'm going to add the pumpkin. Or the pumpkin. The, the pumpkin. The, um, butternut, the butternut squash. squash. Now, um, did you cook it or you just this you boiled is, it yes, and pureed it? Thank you. Um, it's been roasted for 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Just like for oh, the so soup. so you roasted this one mm -hmm. as well. And then I just took it and pureed it. And okay. that's it. So I didn't add any water or anything to that. Yeah, so if you have a baby and you're making massive amounts of puree, you can use some of it for yourself to make some bread. Absolutely. Well, that's <laughs> what I do. I use a cup, use a cup of this, and I have mm -hmm. left over, and I give it to my daughter because she likes her yummy, yummy stuff. Right. <laughs> so. Hey, it's all about multi multitasking and, yes. and, and saving using as much as you can. And, yep. <laughs> And getting them to eat their vegetables. Right. You do have to find ways to sneak it in. Me too. I mean, I didn't at first. She would eat everything. Beets, onions, and now she's just getting kind of picky. But I think it might be a texture. What thing. are some of your favorite things to make? You make? You're making soup and bread here today, but what are some of the other things that on your show that you like to make? Um, well, my mother is from Ecuador, so I like to make a lot of Ecuadorian food. Okay. And I'm adding some chocolate chips. Ooh. About a cup. To make, uh, what's Ecuadorian food? What, what are some it's, Ecuadorian well, dishes? Lots of soups. Um, and lots of meats. And could you pass me um, that special? That, yeah, that keeps going a little bit. Yep. This one? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I'm just going to add my dry mixture into my wet mixture because it's in a bigger bowl. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, we eat lots of different kinds of vegetables. We do empanadas, lots of rice. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's not spicy. A lot of people think, oh, you know, Latin America. It's but spicy. it's not all Latin. Not, yeah, spicy. lots of cumin. So lots of meat with seasoned with cumin, ceviche. 
Ooh, that's a, that's a popular one these days, yeah. especially now. It's kind of like a trendy dish. And I have done some of these on the show, um, mm -hmm. which you can see on uh, Cox.com, because the, the Cox11.com, um, some of the later, or the past episodes are on there. Mm -hmm. Actually, all of them mm -hmm. are on there. So once you get this all mixed up, then we pop it in the oven. How, what, what are you cooking at? 350 degrees? 350? For, this takes a while. 350 for anywhere from 55 to 65 Now, why minutes. does this one take a while? It's very dense. It's very dense and it's very moist. Okay, um, so you have to do the toothpick test a few times. Yes, the toothpick or the and it might take you longer than an hour. Some people's you know ovens can be a little funky sometimes. You never know. Mm -hmm. um, but you definitely want to make sure you grease and um, flour your loaf pan, and it's a regular four and a half by eight and a half loaf pan. Make sure you don't mind okay. passing that to me. And uh, so everybody can catch a show on Cox Channel 11 local here. Yes. And so you're saying it airs multiple times throughout the week. Yes, and then Just the new episodes air on Friday. Oh, so every Friday you can catch the new one, and then through the week yes. and there then, are some reruns. And then all the um, episodes are available on cox11.com. Recipes too? Recipes too. Everything's all on right. there. All right. We'll have her on the thehamptonroadshow.com as well. Well, Karen, I want to thank you for being here. We'll check out your bread uh, when we wrap up the show in a little while, but looks great. Butternut squash in the kitchen today. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much.